on a night where Madison Square Garden ice was Domingue's domain. An imperfect night for the home team, but Louis Domingue was perfectly suited for the moment. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios at the Garden. John Gino alongside Steve Alicat. 4-1 Rangers with the win over the Minnesota Wild. And I guess, Steve, you could really narrow this whole thing down to whatever was said in the dressing room after two periods, which I can only imagine was pretty vociferous given what was said on the ice during the second period. Definitely well, there was something certainly to rally around, and it starts with the goaltender. Louis Domingue put in a performance that inspired. You can use the back pocket excuse that you don't have Shesterkin and Fox and Heedle. The Rangers haven't shown any evidence of doing that all season long. They seem to always have pushback. And although Minnesota had a lot of momentum in the second period after the Rangers carried it in the first, their best was better than Minnesota's best and everybody stepped up. That was collective. You know, from Truba's 25 minutes played all the way through to the depth guys. Louis was great at slowing the game down when he had to, making big saves. To me, once again, this is a Rangers team, not a club. They're a team right now, and they're proving it every shift. And they're a team now that is 10-2-1 on the season, points in nine consecutive games at 8-0-1. Oh, and, and it was a team that started the night perfectly fine yeah. off of the 5-3 win over the Detroit Red Wings two nights ago. A team that less than four minutes in got the first goal, and it came from Vincent Trocek, who scored two on Tuesday and scored another one tonight. Let's go inside the film room, powered by CDW. How did it happen, Steve? You know, you're looking at trying to create more offense off the forecheck. And to me, this is an extension of a forecheck because you get in first, you've got your hunters, everybody's diving down and trying to help. And you see that you get a really good second layer of that from the Gus Bus, who had a terrific game. He's been able to fill in for Fox admirably, playing very well on both sides of the puck, but everybody plays a role in this goal. It's easier to see when you lay it out because Trocek is on the hunt, it's clear. Now, what happens is Minnesota is starting to scramble in their own zone, they force it. Gustafson, he recognizes it and is able to keep it in at the blue line, but this is how you get to the middle of the ice. This is why coaches want forecheck offense because everybody gets manipulated, there's open ice in the middle of the rink, and now Trocek has a clear shot on the goaltender, and it's through a partial screen. They skate through the path of Marc-Andre Fleury. It's a harder play for him to pick up, but we're starting to see more goals come off the forecheck. The Rangers are more willing this year to set that as a staple early in the hockey game. They were able to bring it back in the third and start forechecking again, but that's a big staple of and a characteristic of how to win in the playoffs. So Vincent Trocek had one goal in his first 11 games. He now has three in his last two, four on the season. That gave the Rangers the lead. Minnesota scored in the second period and completely dominated. It stayed 1-1 till the third. Trocek had a three-point night. So did his line mate. Alexi Lafreniere, a goal and two assists. He assisted on the first and third. He scored the game winner, 141 into the third period. And this is the good news because there's depth at how the Rangers are scoring. We're seeing the fancy, we're seeing the net front. We've seen it off the four check. This qualifies as the fancy, but it starts with great defense because everybody's back. And when they see there's a turnover, they're on the same page and everybody leans in to get down the ice together. And that's the key because when you can recognize that you're making a defensive stop and everybody moves together, you have opportunities to break them down. You're trying to isolate a two-on-one. And that's why this works because as soon as the Rangers defend, you'll see all three guys, it's time to go. Panarin and Lafreniere know at this moment right now Minnesota has four trapped and they can isolate a two-on-one. The key to this play working is Lafreniere skating and then as soon as Panarin gets jumped, putting it through the triangle of the Minnesota defender. This doesn't allow Marc-Andre Fleury to have much of a chance. He reaches it. It's a wide open six by four. But all of the research I did this summer on two-on-ones, there were 320 of them scored on that pass. What I saw was as soon as the defender jumps into the circle, that's the trigger for the puck carrier to pass it because his shot's being eliminated right there. There's no shot for Panarin. He has to make the pass, but who's better at disguising whether they're gonna shoot or pass than Panarin right now? Because he's established his shot. It's very difficult to read off of him. There's a lot of false information. Lafreniere though, I give him a lot of credit for having a great target. So that gave the Rangers a 2-1 lead, believe it or not. 
That's all they would need. And that's because of Louis Domingue, who had not won an NHL game since he beat the Rangers in game four of that first round playoff back in May of 22. Had not won a regular season game in 22 months in the NHL. Summoned to play tonight because both Jonathan Quick and Igor Shosturkin did not dress for the Rangers. And all he did was two saves in the first, 14 out of 15 in the second, and all 10 in the third. And he is very much the focus of our Liberty mutual crease cover. Well, John, if you're going to have a poll of all the NHL goalies and ask them, what's the most difficult aspect about being an NHL goalie? It's not getting any shots for a period and then being tested. That's why this was a difficult night that started the right way. And I love the way the Rangers locked down this first shot of the game. It's in the first minute. It's a two on one. Then he starts to bring the puck in. As we get into the second period, he froze the puck a lot. And that's a key because the goalie can control the game. They can slow it down by freezing the puck. He was fighting it off, but also being able to find it. And that's the key because they were shooting well. The Minnesota Wild were hitting their corners. They made him work. He was able to get through a penalty kill that was very important. He gave up one goal in the period. It could have easily have been three. I thought he won this game for the Rangers in the second period with how he performed. You see that save at the end of the third period on Zuccarello. He has a great game. There's nothing to take away from a guy that's being able to keep himself ready for this moment. He is a warrior. Ask anybody around the league that's been around this guy. Everybody talks about his deep will for playing in high character moments. We saw that two years ago. He could have folded two years ago when he was with the Penguins. It was looking a little bleak for him in his career. There wasn't a lot of runway left for him. And he always finds a way, this guy. He's very impressive. And, and it doesn't go unnoticed. Right. A lot of people talk about him around the league that way. 31 years of age, career game number 143, career win number 60 in the NHL, and it will be one to savor. Let's hear from Louis Domingue in the dressing room moments ago with Michelle Gingras. How'd that one feel tonight for you? It felt amazing, honestly. Uh, to get the support of the crowd like that was great. <laughs> like I said before this morning, it's nice to be on their side for once. So, no, my experience tonight was great, and the team played really well in the third to get a win. So, you know, it was just a matter of giving them a chance to, to grab the game, and they did. Coming into this one, what, what was your approach to the game tonight? Uh, same as usual, you know. Um, just try to get by the first five minutes was one one of my keys. Um, you know, from experience, it's always you know when you haven't played in the NHL for a while, you need to get going. You need to adapt to the pace of play, the traffic, the you know how heavy the guys are in front of the net. So it was a matter of me getting by the first little bit and then build on it and try to you know get my feet under me and go. You had a big save actually at the start of the game. Did that kind of help warm me up a little bit? Yeah, yeah. There wasn't many. There wasn't no. There wasn't many shots. But after that, in the second, they they threw a lot of uh, pucks at me and and kind of helped me get going. So, no, on and all, it, it was uh, it wasn't too too complicated. And it, it, it you know the team played well in front of me and, and you know enough to get a great win, a big win at home. And just lastly, real quick, just to hear your name being chanted by the fans. What what did that mean to you? It's great. I, I mean. It was an awesome experience. I wish my kids would have been here to, to see that, but I, I know you know they, I know they were watching at home, and, and uh, hopefully I get to share one with them soon enough. How much of an adjustment is it for you to play with a new team? It wasn't too bad, honestly. Um, you know, I've been in the organization for a little bit now, so the guys know me. They've played me. Um, so it, it wasn't too, too bad, and, and honestly, they kept the pucks away from me a little bit, so I didn't have to... There wasn't any miscommunication behind the net. Everything was pretty direct and clear. Did, did you hear it even? Boy, you could just see it in his face. You could hear it in the words and the tone of voice, yeah. how special tonight is. And it's really what makes sports so cool, right? When a guy can commandeer a stage like that on a night where if he had awakened a week ago, never yeah. would have thought he'd yeah. be at Madison Square Garden stealing a night like that. He was ready for the opportunity. And the fans, you have to know that you guys are a seventh man out there. It helps so much. I had it happen twice in my career where they were yelling Valley. You can uh, yeah. hold the applause, but and it <laughs> happened. It. it did oh, happen. Oh, it did happen. And Absolutely. the buzz you get, mm -hmm. okay? You feel this rush going up your spine and out your head, and then you have so much extra energy. And I know that that's what he was articulating there. He was so grateful that everybody embraced this opportunity that a week ago he never would have imagined. But you stay ready for these things, and how can you not root for that guy? And I imagine that everybody in the locker room wanted this for him. To give him that opportunity 
everybody deserves a garden moment. And he had his tonight, and he was awesome, and I'm so proud of him. And the first thing he's thinking about is he wants his kids to see him play. For sure. Yeah. So, you know, you keep it going and get another opportunity, Louie. Yep, 26 saves for Louis Domingue and part of a 4-1 Rangers win over the Minnesota Wild.